Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Lecture number 28. So, today we are uh, going to start with the uh, gravity gradient satellite. So, what is the basic principle involved here? See, uh, we start with uh, one very simple representation. Say, this is the orbit, orbit of the satellite. And here say Earth is present. Center of the Earth, uh, let us represent this by O prime. And we will take one very simple case. So, a case of a dumbbell. Let us assume that this is RCM, which will write as RC for brief. Okay. This is the center of mass of this dumbbell, and both the masses are equal m and m, and mass this is the earth. So, this is this is earth, it can be earth or it can be any sat satellite uh, so, uh, heavenly body. So, what we observe from this place, if we join this and Okay, say this is the first mass, this is the second mass and we write this as R 1 and this is the R 2. So, obviously, you see that this distance from the center of the earth is less and this distance is more and therefore, the force acting on this particular mass here in this direction which is we can write as F 2 and here along this direction we can write as F 1. So, F 1 magnitude this is greater than F 2 magnitude for this particular configuration. So, what does it imply that at this point which is the center of mass of this dumbbell. So, there will be a torque acting like this okay, because sorry uh, the torque will act in the opposite direction because this uh, this force is more. So, this force is more so and here the force acting is less as compared to this one. So, there will be a net torque along this direction. So, as shown by this arrow. So, this is the net torque and this is nothing but your gravity gradient torque net torque which we write as gravity gradient torque means this torque arises because of variation in the gravity arises because of variation in gravitational acceleration. So, uh, this simple figure it says how your satellite can get affected because of the gravitational pull of the earth. Now, let us say another case we take here in this place. Say, 
say we have the case of a uh, ellipsoid okay this is the center of mass of the ellipsoid and uh, earth is somewhere here this is your earth this is the center of the earth so this is here in this situation you can see that on this half on this half there will be more gravitational pull as compared to this half so here if we indicate by f1 on this side the force by f2 so obviously f1 is greater than f2 and this implies that there will be a tendency for this satellite to turn like this okay so means this implies that if your satellite is in a uh, of a shape where there is a net torque due to the gravitational force about the center of mass then satellite will not remain in that position and this kind of situation though here in this case what we see from this place that if my say here in this situation for this case i am discussing that initially if your satellites these two satellites were uh, sorry this two halves were like this means the dumbbell was initially in this shape and from this you have moved it to this configuration so obviously there will be a torque which will try to restore it back okay so it will try to pull it here in this direction so once it's a disturbed from this situation if it is disturbed from this configuration to this configuration okay so there will be a net torque here in this direction which will try to move it toward the original position so we call this kind of case it's a stable is a gravity gradient stability means uh, once we are discussing so th this is simple simply a stable case but it so happens that because the gravitational forces it's a conservative so therefore this will keep oscillating and you need to damp out these things until unless if uh, there are other factors which is trying to damp it on the other hand if you take a case where your satellite is in the form of a dumbbell and it's a looking like this and it's in this configuration here is your earth okay so you can observe that the forces acting on these two masses will be same because of this configuration okay now if you disturb from this configuration then what happens so once it's a disturbed from this configuration and say it comes to this position after disturbance then what will happen you see that this force the force acting on this and force acting on this if this is f1 and this is f2 so f1 magnitude this will be greater than f2 magnitude and what this will do this will give it a net torque here in this direction so if your dumbbell which was lying like this dumbbell sat satellite which is you know originally in this position and it is disturbed to this position so it will not tend to return back to the original configuration rather it will go and it will keep moving keep moving and it will come to th this position means for the stability earlier we have discussed that there should be tendency to return back toward the original equilibrium position so here this is a statically not a stable it's a simply it implies if we look here in the this a static configuration and moreover if it is left over a period of time it will go away from this position and it will keep a start to oscillating okay so this kind of configuration is a unstable because the disturbance it increases over a period of times you have given initial disturbance by say this angle you have disturbed this angle is here something like theta 
So, this angle will increase over a period of time, it will not decrease okay. and therefore, this configuration it it is statically unstable and dynamically what we see that here in this case, we uh, will have to do a lot more work before we finally, come to whether it is a dynamically stable or not, but if once we can say that if it is statically unstable there is no restoring force means it is a dynamically unstable. So, uh, this thing we are going to analyze mathematically. Okay. This is a very simple representation, but uh, for our uh, actual satellite modeling once we are doing it for uh, say the ISRO is working. So, if, uh, and if it is designing a gravity, gravity gradient satellite. So, uh, this uh, whatever we have discussed till now it is not enough. We need to discuss these uh, things in terms of mathematics and make the things very precise. So, that proper fabrication of the satellite and uh, it is uh, how much time it will take to say here in this case as we, we are discussing uh, this particular case that if it is this was the original position okay, and this is the disturbed position. So, if it is disturbed from the original position how far uh, by certain amount. So, if, uh, we have disturbed it from this position to this position. Okay. So, by theta angle let us say that we have disturbed it. So, how much time it takes to go from this position to this position all these things you can work out it is all possible. Okay. You can do various kind of studies what will be the period of oscillation because the gravitational force is uh, conservative. So, if, uh, if it is oscillating all the time so how what will be the period of oscillation whether it will affect your mission and so on many things need to be discussed. So, with this we start with in the main purpose say your satellite can be in an elliptical orbit or it can be in a circular orbit. Say for this assume that this is a circular orbit and here this is the center of the earth. And this is your satellite. So, earlier in the very first class we have discussed about the reference system. So, let us assume that this is the velocity vector of the satellite. So, along this direction we write E 1 O means this is the first or the x axis of the orbital axis. So, this is the orbital x axis. And how we have written the uh, demons, uh, this uh, depicted the orbital axis even along this direction and E 2 along E 2 taking the right hand rule. So, it will be down and we will show it by cross this is E 2 and this O stands for the orbital and E 3 along this direction which is pointing toward the center of the earth. So, this is your E 3 direction. So, this forms a triad. Okay. If the orbit is not circular it, there are cases where your satellite may not be in a circular orbit rather than in an elliptical orbit. Let us say that I am showing a very highly elliptical orbit. So, uh, it is exaggerated figure. So, let us say that uh, your satellite is lying somewhere here. Okay. And this is the center of mass of the satellite. So, we will choose E 0 1 along this direction this angle it is a perpendicular this is 90 degree this will be 90 degree. 
velocity vector will be tangent to the your v 0 will be tangent to this ellipse. Okay, velocity vector is always tangent to the trajectory. So, v 0 is here in this direction. So, e 1 along this direction this is the center of the earth we can write this as E c earth center circular orbit elliptical E 2 and this we are writing as E o 3 and obviously, here E o 2 it goes inside. So, E 1, E 2, E 3. So, you can see that here your velocity vector is also along the same direction, this is the velocity vector. So, both are coinciding. So, from where this notation is arising, we will follow this notation. This notation arises from the aircraft. In the case of the aircraft, Okay, x axis is taken along this direction, y axis like this and z axis vertically downward toward the belly of the aircraft. And you know that aircraft it flies along this direction, so v is along this direction. It may happen that v can be also along this direction, but the body axis it is a fixed along this direction. So, this is the body axis here in this case, we are not talking here about the body axis, this is simply the orbital axis. And with respect to this orbital axis, the E 1, E 1 0, E 2 0, E 3 0, this is the triad and with respect to this, your body is oriented. Okay. So, here I have shown the body to be like this. So, uh, let us say that your uh, body is arbitrarily, I can show it like this. This is E 1. E 2, E 3 and if we put B here, so this indicates this is for the body axis. Similarly, here in this case I can show it, but I will not uh, make it clumsy. So, remember that your E 1 axis will be always shown like this. Here this is the, the orbital axis system, the orbital axis system, it is always shown like this. This direction I will show by E 3, this direction going vertically down into the page by E 2 and E 1 along this. So, E 1 has the same sense as V 0. Here in this case, if you look here in this place, so you can have rotation abo about the velocity vector. So, here also if you look this is the velocity vector. So, you can have if the velocity vector is having the same direction as the x. So, you can have rotation about the velocity axis, but uh, obviously for the aircraft the things are much more complicated. It is a representation there, there are the angle of attack, side slip and so many things are there that needs to be uh, discussed before anything can be mentioned about the aircraft. So, uh, we confine ourselves to the satellite and discuss further on this. So, this is the de basic description. Okay. There is one another notation which is called the L V L H. This is local vertical local horizontal. If you look into the journal papers, so some of the journal papers instead of considering E 0 here in this direction, they will take E 0 along this direction okay, as, as shown by this arrow. So, E 0 3 along this direction and E 0 2 then it will be coming out of the page. Okay. So, it will be coming out from this place. So, uh, so th this particular notation we will not follow. Okay, we will follow this notation. Okay. 
Okay. So, let us start. So, let us assume that say if my e 0 1 it is here e 0 2 is vertically downward and e 0 3. So, e 1 e 2 e 3 e 1 e 2 e 3 this is the right hand uh, rule we are applying and this points toward the center of earth. Okay. Now, this is about the what we have discussed uh, uh, this is your uh, orbital axis system. Now, what about the inertial axis system? Inertial axis system let us say that I can fix here in this place. As you know that inertial axis system it is a non rotating system. So, uh, but for uh, describing the inertial axis system itself it is a very complicated. Okay, if you go to the astronomy, so the axis system they use in the uh, astronomy it consists of uh, two semester course. So, we need not go into all those details uh, because we have to focus on the uh, satellite dynamics. So, what we assume that if this is the situation uh, I can uh, say if, uh, I can take here the inertial axis system something like this. Okay or I can have any other orientation and with respect to this then this system is oriented E 1, E 2, E 3. This I can say that this is my inertial system. Already rotation we have discussed. So, with respect to this, this rotation is indicated. Now, going back again here in this figure, if the satellite is having velocity along this direction. So, where will be the angular velocity of the satellite? So, I will make another figure here. Let us say this is the circular orbit being shown if we look uh, from the top. Okay. So, your angular velocity of the satellite it will be this is the this is called the orbital angular velocity this which is different from orbital angular velocity. It is different from the angular velocity of the satellite with respect to this body axis. Like I have this mobile and this mobile is rotating. So, uh, I will say that this is the angular velocity of the satellite it is having certain value along the three axis it is having certain uh, values. But this as a whole this is also rotating in the orbit it is a going like this and besides it is a rotating like this. Okay. So, it is a rotating like this and going all along the orbit. So, in the orbit while it moves like this. So, that thing I have indicated here this omega 0 this is also called the orbital frequency. So, the same thing also we call as the orbital frequency. So, if we want to show the angular velocity of the satellite. So, this is the angular velocity with respect to the inertial axis with respect to the inertial axis. Then how we can write? So, my satellite is rotating with respect to this axis and this axis is rotating with respect to the inertial axis. So, your satellite is here okay, and this satellite is and in this direction your E here it is your E O 3. Okay. So, E O 3 is changing over a period of time after some time it will be along this direction after some time it will be here right now it is here. Okay, so, this will change its direction. So, with respect to this we describe the motion of the satellite as omega r. So, omega r and plus omega 0 what this is? This is the relative angular velocity which you call the angular velocity with respect to angular velocity 
of the satellite with respect to the orbital x system while omega 0 omega 0 this is the orbital frequency or orbital angular velocity we will not call this as the frequency because this is a vector so this is orbital angular velocity that implies so if we vectorially add okay we know that angular velocity can be added so if we vectorially add means this frame is rotating with angular velocity omega 0 with respect to the inertial frame okay so orbital angular velocity of the satellite that is its center of mass is moving okay of the satellite center of mass with respect to the inertial axis so with respect to this e axis this frame is rotating okay as shown here so as the satellite goes here so th this frame right now it is here after some time the same thing it will come in a position as of this will be e10 e20 and so obviously you can see that this is the center of mass of the satellite satellite to this figure uh, the blue line the rectangular part i am not showing here so this line uh, this coordinate axis for this reference axis has rotated from this place to this place okay so there is a rotation involved for the orbital axis itself okay it's a very obvious it's a rotating about the this vertical axis which is passing through the page of the paper okay. so this axis rotates with respect to this and the satellite then rotates with respect to this axis so in this axis then we can uh, as we have shown the orientation uh, here in this place like this so your orientation will change and it will come to some other configuration let us say if, uh, it comes to if, uh, it goes like this e3 comes along this direction eb and uh, eb2 is here e1 e2 e3 so this is e2b and here e1b so e1 e2 e3 right hand rule okay we are using the right hand rule e1 e2 and then e3 along the thumb so this orientation can change e1 was here so e1 has gone here in this place so there is a rotation of the satellite with respect to the orbital axis which is shown here by this brown line and also there is a rotation of this orbital axis which is shown by this brown line brown lines with respect to the inertial axis which i have not shown here in this place but inertial axis let us say that if i try to show it here i can put it like something like this instead of putting it here i am just putting it here for convenience so i can put it here in this place and i can write this this is e1 this is e2 and e3 along this direction okay either e1 e2 e3 whatever the way i choose to write and therefore from this consideration the uh, angular velocity of the satellite then becomes with respect to the inertial frame it will be sum of these two first with the angular velocity of the orbital axis okay with respect to the inertial axis system and then 
the orbital uh, then the angular velocity of the satellite with respect to the orbital axis system. So, you uh, get this very uh, clearly that the first this rotation is referring to the co this coordinate uh, this reference axis the orbital reference axis rotation with respect to the inertial axis system. Okay, this is your orbital axis system orbital axis and this is the inertial axis system. So, this, this is rotating with respect to this and with respect to this then the satellite is rotating. So, both are then vectorally added to get the net angular velocity of the satellite. Okay, so, this puts the background for discussing further uh, rest of the things. Okay. Now, we go back uh, we, we have to again discuss about the rotation and other things, but I will come to that later on. Let us uh, start with uh, the development. basic formulation for the gravity gradient satellite. If we take this to be the earth, this is the orbit and uh, I have a rigid body here. We are discussing with the respect to the rigid body. This is a rigid body here in this place. this figure is exaggerated remember because this is earth is very large this radius is around 6 3 7 4 kilometers while your satellite may be of few meter radius. So, uh, do not take as it is okay. if this is the situation then the whole development whatever I am going to do here it will be totally different from that. So, this is the center of mass of this satellite. We take a small mass inside this satellite and say this mass is dm, this vector we write as rho and the vector from the center of the earth to this place we write this as r c indicating that this is the center of mass of the satellite this we can see set as c and then finally this point we can join together and this is your r so the radius vector of mass m that becomes r equal to r c plus rho. Okay. So, obviously, as we have discussed in the case of the dumbbell, there will be a force acting on this mass. Okay and we can take torque about this point about the center of mass. So, already if, uh, as per our earlier discussion in the previous lectures that uh, if we write the torque equation about the center of mass then no extra term appears, but if we write about some any other point then the extra term appears. So, we therefore, we are choosing here the center of mass and not any other point. Okay. Therefore, the torque about the center of mass of the satellite can be written as rho cross d f, where d f is the 
force acting on the so, so d f will be along this direction here it will be acting along i will show it by some other color this is your d f the force acting on this and this we write as d m equal to d f now the this case can be very complicated if we consider the earth to be oblate okay then the system and moreover the density of the earth it's a varying as you know it's a not constant throughout the sphere of the earth okay so if we start discussing that way it will be very very tough to develop uh, this topic particularly in this class if you are interested in looking that uh, how the oblate earth the acceleration due to uh, at any point due to an oblate earth is represented so you can refer to the book on geodesy this is a book on geodesy by kaula so this is our basic equation and what are the assumptions we are going to make here we need to make certain assumptions that is satellite gets affected only by the primary primary means in this case it's earth there is moon also but moon consideration it cannot uh, will not take it and uh, the uh, sun is also present so if we are trying to do very accurate propagation of the satellite orbit so in that case the perturbation due to the moon sun and various other planets is taken but for this the attitude dynamics it's not required so if, uh, if the size of the satellite is very large like uh, it's a uh, say the you are considering the moon itself okay for which is a satellite of the earth okay but the distance now it becomes large but if that this distance is reduced and say the it's a moving uh, just near the surface of the earth uh, size of the uh, satellite which is of the size of the moon then the we need to consider various other factors okay uh, so here we will simplify it as the case that this is my primary primary body and about this this uh, this is satellite which is moving so the first this is the first assumption then the we will assume that uh, as you know from the newton's law that the gravity due to th this place uh, this whole earth because the inside the density is varying okay and therefore the acceleration due to gravity at this point it can be very complicated we'll, but we'll simplify this assuming that the whole mass of the earth is concentrated at this point o prime which is the center of the earth c is the center of the earth so here spherical symmetry is present this is not oblate case for the oblate case this is the oblate for the oblate case you have to disc, uh, look into the book on geodesy by kaula so spherical symmetry and uniform density the spacecraft or the satellite is a rigid body we are not discussing it for the flexible case and the fourth 
as we have discussed that this is a very small as compared to the distance from this place to this place. So, the fourth is satellite size is much small as compared to the distance between the center of mass and the center of earth. So, under this four assumptions we can uh, develop the sat satellite uh, dynamics under gravity gradient. So, already we have written that d m the torque acting on the satellite it can be written as rho cross d f and if we put a g here. So, this just indicates that this is the force due to the gravity. So, f g is the force due to due to gravity. And as we know this d f g can be written as mu y this r magnitude whole q okay. going back here in this place. So, this is your r vector, r vector is along this direction. Okay. So, if, uh, magnitude of uh, the distance from this point to this point, this is r magnitude. So, r magnitude and then the unit vector along multiplied by here d m and the unit vector here in this direction. So, because we have put here q, so we will not write unit vector, but rather write this as r. Okay. If we have if we write here r square, so then we will write in terms of the unit vector along the r direction. So, unit vector along this direction, okay. this is r cap while r is a vector along this direction. Okay. Now, if, uh, if we have to calculate the whole torque, so if we want m, so we must integrate this over the whole body, okay. which simply I will write this as b or we can remove this b altogether. Okay, this is just integration over the whole body and therefore, this becomes rho cross and here we need to put a minus sign because the gravitational force it is acting along this direction. It is a gravitational force is opposite to the r direction, r is here, this is your r direction okay, while the gravitational force direction it is along here. Okay toward the center of the earth and therefore, we must put a minus sign here in this place okay. and if we put that minus sign. So, we can write this as mu r d m and then okay. So, this is our basic equation and we need to develop it further to get the equation of motion of this uh, rigid body which is in this case the spacecraft under gravity gradient. So, thank you very much.